Today I'm going to go over AP Precalculus topic 3.3, sine and cosine function values. Now we talked about radians uh, and how we are going to use radians as our angle measure in AP Precalculus. Uh, one way to organize lots of radian values that are common and their sine and cosine values is something called the unit circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly uh, fill out some important pieces on a unit circle. Now, if you have not seen a unit circle or it has not, it's been a while, I have a much more in-depth video that I want you to watch uh, first. So please click on this to do so. Alright, so the quick version of the unit circle. This is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1. And then the corresponding coordinates based on those different angle measures. In the video I indicated before, I used degrees to show how special right triangles tie into this. Here I'm just going to go through the values. Uh, so for the radians, we start at zero, and then on the unit circle, the arc length is equal to the, the radian value. So if I go all the way around this circle of a radius of one, that radian value is two pi. So the first thing I'm going to go is my quadrantals. If this is pi, 2 pi, this is pi, this is half of pi, this would be 3 halves of pi. Okay, from here to here, this is half of this distance, so that's going to be pi over 4. This is 3 quarters, so 3 pi over 4. This is pi over 4 more than pi, so 5 pi over 4. And then this will be... 7 pi over 4. Okay. These ones from here to here, 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 are one sixth of this top piece. So this is pi over 6. This is 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. This is 3 pi over 3, or 6 pi over 3. So 1, 2, 3. 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, which reduces to 4 pi over 3, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, which reduces to 5 pi over 3, and 11 pi over 6. So here, The pi over sixes are the ones closest to the x axis. Okay, so this is pi over six. This distance is pi over six, which is why this is one pi over six away from pi. This is one more pi over six than pi. Uh, and then this one is one pi, pi over six less than 12 pi over 12. The ones, uh, closest to the y-axis have our denominators of 3. Okay, so this distance is pi over 3. This is another pi over 3, another pi over 3, another pi over 3. So you can count it, uh, but bottom line, you need to know these values. Okay. Through right triangle trig, we can figure out the coordinates. So the first ones to start with are the quadrantals. So just on the x, y, if this has a radius of 1 and this is centered at the origin, that's 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Through right triangle trig, you'll find the coordinates for the 4s, the pi over 4s, are going to be root 2 over 2. Okay, now this distance and this distance are the same as this distance and this distance. It's just that this is in the second quadrant, so my x is going to be negative. Okay, this same distance here, so this is a negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. And then reflect that over one more time. with a positive root 2 over 2 and a negative root 2 over 2. Okay. 
these ones, again, through equilateral triangles and 30, 60, 90 triangles as a result, gives us an x of root 3 over 2 and a y of 1 half. This is going to get mirrored to the four sixes. So this will be a negative root 3 over 2, 1 half. This will be a negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. This will be a positive root 3 over 2, positive 1 half, negative 1 half. Um, one kind of trick I use in my head is I look at this has a long x, short y. Root 3 over 2 is a long, the big number, 1 half is the small number. These ones are going to be the same but flipped because this triangle is the same as this triangle. Uh, so they're flipped. And again, I have much more detailed explanation in my other video. Negative 1 half, root 3 over 2. Negative 1 half, negative root 3 over 2. And 1 half, negative root 3 over 2. So we're looking at our x values get bigger as we move this direction. Our y values get bigger as we go up the circle. So this is something that you need to have memories and you need to, and you have to be able to visualize it. And that's something that we're going to be working on. So why do we need the unit circle? Well, the unit circle contains the sine and cosine values on the, for all of those different angle measures. Uh, the cosine is our x coordinate and our sine is the y coordinate. Uh, Cause we talked about last in 3.2 that when we have a unit circle, the x and the y values are the sine and cosine. Now, one thing I like to remember, cosine, sine. If you ever are forgetting, uh, they're in alphabetical order, just like the coordinates x and y are in alphabetical order. Okay, so what we do, uh, for right now we're going to use the unit circle, but we are going to start to think through it without having it in front of us. Uh, but having it in front of us will help us with the patterns and seeing everything, um, is if I want the cosine of pi over 4, we find the angle measure for pi over 4, and you find the x-coordinate there, which is root 2 over 2. Okay, sine of pi over 3, we go to pi over 3 and find the y-value, which is root 3 over 2. Okay, cosine of pi, we go to the x-coordinate at pi, which is a negative 1. Okay, sine of 5 pi over 6, so that's the one just shy of pi, and we're looking at the y-value there, which is going to be a positive 1 half because it's going to be the short end. Okay, sine of 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 is straight down, so the y-coordinate there is going to be negative 1. Cosine of 0. Okay, cosine of 0 is the x value at 0 radians, which is 1. Okay, sine of negative pi over 6. Okay, when we have a negative angle, we're measuring going clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So this distance here is positive pi over 6, which means this distance here is negative pi over 6. So I'm going to use the coordinates here. For sine, I want the negative one half there, the y coordinate. Okay, cosine of seven pi over four. Negative. So seven pi over four is all the way around three quarters around this circle going counterclockwise. So if I'm doing a negative seven pi over four, we're going three fourths of the circle, I guess seven eighths of the circle. Uh, this direction. So we end up at positive pi over 4. Okay, so the x value of positive pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Okay, cosine negative 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 is this distance here. So we're going to repeat that going in our negative direction, which will be equivalent to 2 pi over 3. The x coordinate there is negative 1 half because it's the short distance to the y-axis there. 8 pi over 3, that's not on the unit circle. Uh, but what I can do is subtract 2 pi. Well, 2 pi is equivalent to 6 pi over 3, because if I go around the circle 
a full rotation, you end up at the same location, just two pi bigger. Uh, so if I subtract two pi, this is gonna be equivalent to uh, two pi over three. So that's up at, in the second quadrant, close to the y-axis. So my x value there is a negative one half. Sorry, y value. It's mean cosine. Uh, y value up at the top is a positive root three over two. Okay, cosine five pi. So I'm gonna subtract two pi, but I'm gonna do that twice to be equivalent to cosine of pi. Cosine of pi, our x value there is negative one. And then negative 21 pi over four. So eight pi over four is equal to two pi. So if I add three of those, or 24 over pi, to 21 over pi, that gives me three pi over four. And then I'll find the y value there, three pi over four is in the second quadrant, so that's a positive root two over two. Okay. If we are given an angle in standard position and a radius of that angle, we can find the coordinates for that point uh, using sine and cosine. Okay, so we know that cosine of theta equals x over r and sine of theta equals y over r. So if I rearrange and multiply by r, r cosine theta equals x. And if I multiply over here, r sine theta equals y. Might make a little bit more sense to rewrite those backwards. Which gives us x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So the coordinates of this point with an angle theta are going to be r cosine theta, r sine theta. Okay, so given an angle in standard position and a radius, we are going to find the coordinates for the intersection of the ray and the circle. Uh, super easy. It's always x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. And for, for some reason, again, cosine and x go together, sine and y go together. So my x coordinate is going to be 8 cosine 3 pi over 4. My y is going to be 8 sine 3 pi over 4. Okay, then we use our unit circle or visualize. We're at the 4, 1 in the second quadrant, which means my x value is going to be a negative root 2 over 2. My y value is going to be a positive root 2 over 2. So when I simplify that, I get negative 4 root 2 for my x coordinate and a positive 4 root 2 for my y coordinate. x is going to equal 5 cosine 5 pi over 3. y is equal to 5 sine 5 pi over 3. Okay, so the three denominators are the ones that are closer to the y-axis. Uh, so this is the one in the fourth quadrant. So my x value is positive, and it's the short distance, which is 1 half. My y is going to be negative, and it's the long distance, which is negative root 3 over 2. So my coordinates here are going to be 5 halves and negative 5 root 3 over 2. Okay, next we're going to go the other direction. Given the coordinates, can I find the r and the theta that led us to that point? Okay. Um, so the way I think about it, it's thinking back to our trusty unit circle, is you're looking for a coordinate that sort of looks like this, but we don't have coordinates that look like that on the unit circle, because all of ours are less than one and root three is not less than one. Um, but if we look on our unit circle, it's gotta be in the first quadrant because it's a positive positive, and it matches sort of this one half root three over two. So in my equation, I'm looking at, well, what can I multiply 1 half by to get 1, and what can I multiply root 3 over 2 by to get 
to get root 3. Well, both of those I can multiply by 2. So since my formula is our cosine theta and our sine theta, my r is going to be 2. And then my theta, where we got that coordinate from, is going to be pi over 3. Okay, if I've got some root 2s involved, that's going to be at one of our pi over 4s. Uh, this one's a positive negative, so it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. But our coordinates are root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. So what would I need to multiply these by to get this? Well, to get a numerator of 8, I need to multiply by 16. So my r is 16, and my theta, the pi over 4 angle in the fourth quadrant, is 7 pi over 4. Okay, last, we've got a negative positive, which means we're in the second quadrant, which means we're looking at root 3 over 2, 1 half as our corresponding point. Okay, what would I have to multiply these by? Well, my r would have to be a 1 half to multiply to get those. My theta, uh, negative root 3 over 2 is my long x short y, so that's going to be my pi over 6 in that quadrant, which is 5 pi over 6. Okay, angles B and A and B are in standard position in the xy plane. The measure of angle A is pi over 3 radians. The measure of angle B is 5 pi over 3 radians. The terminal rays of both angles intersect the circle centered at the origin with a radius of 10. What is the distance between the two points of intersection? Uh, there. So let's sketch ourselves a little picture. So I got myself a circle. And I have two angles here. We've got pi over 3 and all the way back around in the fourth quadrant, I have five pi over three. So this is my B, this is my A. And we wanna know the distance between these guys. Okay, well first, the distance is gonna be the distance between the Y values. Okay, so this Y value minus this Y value gives me my distance. So the Y value here I'll just do both. The x value is 10 cosine pi over 3. The y value is 10 sine pi over 3. Here I've got 10 cosine 5 pi over 3. 10 sine 5 pi over 3. Now we could go ahead and simplify these, but the point of this is to understand how do we find that distance. The distance is going to be the distance between the top value there minus the bottom y value. Okay, now could we evaluate these? Yes, uh, it just depends on what type of, how we're asked for the question. So this was uh, topic 3.3, .3, sine and cosine function values.